Hey, Latchpreneurs, on today's episode, I'm sharing with you just how to handle the three most common client issues that you're going to run into in your business and how you can enforce policies effectively with less worry about being this confrontational bad guy. The three issues that I'm going to address in today's episode are last minute cancellations due to an emergency or an unforeseen circumstance, uh, like they tested positive for COVID or they've been exposed to COVID, uh, a fill when it really should be a full set and we're not doing this whole, well, just do what you can today. There's a policy that can and will address that situation and then refund requests. So I'll share with you the policy you should have in place that would address each one of these issues, how to implement this policy and what the perk is to having a policy that specifically uh, addresses each one of these issues. So if you're interested in seeing the example policies that I use in my business, you can download them at thelashpreneur.com slash policies. Now as a quickie disclaimer before I get into this, policies, client waivers, release of liability, all of those are legal contracts. And I highly, highly advise you to get those documents reviewed by a lawyer, attorney, whatever you want to call it, that's licensed in your state. That way you can be sure that it is enforceable and legal so that if you ever need to protect yourself because of a signed contract, you have a lawyer's sign off that everything on a contract is a-okay to put on a contract. Nothing in this episode is to be construed as legal advice and is for education and entertainment purposes only because I am not a licensed attorney in your area. All right, let's dive in. So first uh, issue we run into is last minute cancellations due to an emergency or unforeseen circumstances. Now, these may be made up by the clients or they may not. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter to you. It shouldn't matter to you. You shouldn't have to go, you know, call in the dogs to go check out their Instagram account and their stories to see what they've been up to last night. And oh, they were actually hung over. They were out till 4 a.m. Because she posted four hours ago and her appointment's right now at eight o'clock. No, we're not doing that. That has zero relevance on your business. You have policies in place that no matter what happens with the client, whether they're lying or not, your business still has structure in place. So the policy solution to handle a last minute cancellation due to an emergency or unforeseen circumstance, kid got sick, they're exposed to COVID, what have you, there's tons of them. Um, is the sickness and family emergency cancellation policy. This is my recommended policy. And this policy states something along the lines of, if you or another person in your household has an infectious or contagious illness, please contact us as soon as possible to reschedule your for appointment for a later date. For your safety and that of the staff and other clients, please do not come to your appointment sick. If it is assumed you are currently sick, your appointment may be cut short or canceled and rescheduled for when you are healthy again. Here's the cool part. A one-time allowance of the last minute cancellation or reschedule will be permitted for sickness or family emergency. After that, the cancellation and no-shows policy will be in effect no matter what. So how do you implement this policy? Again, with policies, we wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page from their very first appointment. So there is no, no, I didn't know about the policy. You sit in your consultation and you go through your policies and you talk about them, right? That way everybody's on the same page. I know it takes time, but it's going to take you more time fighting somebody who wants a refund request or keeps canceling than if you just take the time to do it on the very first appointment. So everybody's on the same page as far as what happens in XYZ scenario. So the key to this being a long-term solution to any last minute client cancellations is to have that conversation when they use this. So client cancels last minute or you can't get a hold of them and they, they had some emergency or they were exposed to COVID or they're really sick and they just can't come in. Instead of copying an attitude and charging them, we have a little bit of humanity that we're extending an olive branch of, I understand stuff comes up. This is why I have this one-time emergency. So you could use language like, I totally understand XYZ came up. I want you to go take care of yourself and not worry about your appointment. This is exactly why I have that sickness and family emergency policy where we offer a one-time exception to our cancellation policy. Please be aware that this is a one and only allowance to our cancellation policy that we can offer you. And any future last minute cancel cancellations will be charged no matter what. That is the language you need to use in this conversation with a client, whether it's over the phone, text message, DMs, whatever. The no matter what is key in you communicating to the client 
that no matter the situation moving forward, whether they were hospitalized, severely ill, or forgot to cancel because they were hungover, your cancellation policy will apply. You have done your, your humanness and you have said, I understand stuff comes up. That's why we have this one in place. However, this is your use of that one time emergency exception, whatever you have, you, your cancellation policy will apply from here on out, no matter what. It's best to have this in writing just in case they were like, well, I didn't know. And be like, well, let's go back to June 15th when we had this conversation. Scroll up in your text messages and you will see where I communicated this to you. And you said, okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I adore you. I'll call you to reschedule later. Right? So ideally you have it as proof in writing. Um, and this exchange with the client creates the communication in no uncertain terms. Right? So it's not vague. It's like, Hey girl, take care of yourself. I've got a policy for it. Awesome. You're good. No, we have the conversation of here's the policy that I'm going to apply today so that you don't have to worry about any sort of cancellation fee. But now as a heads up, this is what's going to happen from here on out. No matter what, I don't care what the situation is. No matter what is pretty darn clear that no matter what happens, the cancellation policy will, will be in effect. So now you've got a backbone to stand on anytime this might happen in the future. This will weed out the flakes, those that are constantly canceling because you are going to enforce that you were charged because you already gave them a heads up. It's not a surprise, right? If they want to claim to be surprised, that's on them. They should see a therapist. However, you communicated clearly your expectations and the consequences to what happens if they violate your policy again. You're not the bad guy here. You're just a person operating in integrity, following through with what you say you're going to do they should follow suit, but not everybody does. So the purpose of this policy is that you don't have to be the bad guy when someone doesn't show up for their appointment because of a legitimate cause, because you've already set the expectation that you've extended the olive branch, right? You are, you are showing human decency that there is a one-time exception for when life happens, because it does, and we've all seen that. Especially with COVID, we kind of have to be a little bit lax on our policies, because in this case, if somebody is sick, we don't want them in our business right? If you get sick because a client was, had a cold or the flu or whatever, you're, you can't make money while you're out sick and you don't want to risk your other clients getting sick. Cause that's, that's awful. You don't want to be, you don't want to be patient zero or whatever they call it. Um, so we, we eliminate ongoing cancellations by allowing this one cancellation so that we can have that conversation of no matter what. It really is a strategy of minimizing the number of cancellations and recurring cancellations from clients and last minute cancellations, which does your business no good. It's really hard to fill an appointment last minute. That's why we have a cancellation policy. So you come out looking like the hero because you've allowed this one time exception for ideally a true emergency or family sickness. You come out looking like the hero because you've saved the day. You're not going to charge them this one time, but you have now set the expectation for your business moving forward and for that client this is a one-time situation, girl. You are now using that one-time situation. I'm so happy that I could accommodate you today. Let's get you rescheduled. Just as a heads up, this is your use of your one-time emergency cancellation. You're going to be charged cancellation policy from here on out, no matter what. Um, <laughs> this also eliminates the need for you extra control controlling and vindictive uh, lashpreneurs out there who go stalking clients' social media pages and find out the real reason they didn't actually show up to their appointment. Oh, I see you in the Facebook groups. Y'all get y'all calling the dogs and are like, hey, I saw this client. Here's a screenshot. Everybody go blow her up because she was actually like drunk and let's make her miserable because she didn't show up to her appointment today. Oof, don't worry about that. No, I don't care if it's a legitimate emergency or not. That is not your business. You have your business with its policies and that's all you can control. If a client doesn't show up because they're hungover or they slept in or they just forgot, like not on you. You've got policies in place to protect your business. Uh, you also have written proof of a signed copy of your policies agreeing to this policy and a screenshot, hopefully, of the exchange of when you are allowing them to use this policy. It's a one-time policy, right? After that, they can... you you have proof. So if they dispute it with a credit card company, you not only have proof of them signing the policy from their first appointment, you then have a screenshot when the policy was in place and that they would be charged for future cancellations no matter what. You submit that to the credit card dispute company and you go, I got my bases covered. You can't refund this uh, charge because it was a legitimate charge that she was aware of and agreed to. Winning.
take that PayPal. Um, <laughs> again, the only thing here that we have to be a little bit more lenient on is the COVID exception. COVID is just the reality of the world that we're living in. During COVID and shutdowns uh, and strict regulations and contact tracing, we all need to be a little bit flexible and use our best judgment, even if at times doing so goes directly against our policies. Unique situations call for unique solutions. So use your judgment to make this call that feels most aligned with any COVID related cancellations. We never want to punish someone for doing what's right, right? So if they are at risk of being exposed, but they don't have a positive test, but they're, they're trying to quarantine so that they're not spreading it, let's not punish them for that. Let's not you know, make them pay for being a good citizen of humanity. If it happens that every appointment that they're all of a sudden exposed, then maybe they're not a good candidate. Maybe now is not just the right time for them to have ongoing um, uh, lash extensions. Maybe they need to call the day that they want an appointment and see if there's anything available so they don't risk continuing to cancel and take up time on your schedule. But again, with COVID being as rampant as it still is, we need to have some flexibility in this when it comes to COVID-related cancellations. All right, issue number two, a fill when it really should be a full set and the whole just do what you can situation. I can't stand this, but I understand you're like, I don't have time for a full set. She didn't come expecting a full set and I'd rather take the client and make a little bit of money than turn her away, piss her off and risk a bad review and lose a client. I get it, but we have a policy for that. The policy solution for this issue is a fill policy. So a minimum number not percentage, a minimum number of extensions remaining per eye to be considered a fill. Y'all be crazy if you think you know the difference between 48% remaining and 57% remaining. Unless you're lash counting at every single appointment and you do the actual math of you left with 82 extensions on this eye and you turn back with 42, like that's not 50%. Get over the percentage. I don't know where this came from. It's a terrible idea. Just gonna flat out say it, it makes no sense. You don't understand it, the clients don't understand it, so why are we using it? Uh, so have a finite number, a client cannot argue with, you have 18 extensions remaining on this side and you need a minimum of 25, you do the math, you don't have enough to be a fill. Uh, so this policy, this fill policy states, we recommend our clients to come back every two to three weeks or fill in whatever, uh, for their fill appointments to ensure your natural lashes remain healthy and your extensions stay looking full. We also educate our clients on proper aftercare of extensions to ensure each client gets the maximum retention out of their lash extensions. We do require 30 extensions remaining per eye to be eligible for our fill appointments. If a client has less than 30 extensions per eye, the fill appointment will be adjusted to a full set service at the current full set price if time allows, or the appointment will be scheduled, uh, rescheduled to a future agreed upon time for when a full set appointment is available. Communicating, if this happens, here's the response that we as the business have. So how do you implement this policy? Well, first is the education of this policy before a client ever receives the service. So during their first consultation, you could include in your policy that you recommend following the aftercare steps provided to you at the end of your service, as well as pre-booking out your future appointments as a best practice to minimize the possibility of this scenario happening. Next, we wanna educate on the importance of following aftercare and how the aftercare you recommend helps them maximize their retention and minimize, minimizes them needing a new full set in the future. When you are prioritizing natural lash health, clients can wear lashes indefinitely. So there could be a scenario where they just get fills forever, right? If you are protecting the natural lash health and you're not impacting the growth cycle, yeah, they can wear it forever. Um, and lastly, when in doubt, count it out, sis. And I've had to do this with a couple of clients. If you're not sure if a client has enough extensions left to say, ooh, Susan, what happened, girl? You can say something along these lines. Your retention seems to have gone down a lot since your previous appointments. And then let the client explain what they believed happened. If you shut up and listen, they will either rat themselves out of like, yeah, I cried really hard the night of my appointment and a lot of them fell out and I just, you know, I didn't think to call you or whatever. Um, or they'll say, yeah, I don't know what happened in the last three weeks. Like in the last couple of days, it's been two weeks, but they all started falling out at once or whatever. If you listen more than you try to solve the situation for them, they may share why retention, 
was for. Uh, maybe you can tell they have makeup on and it's really greasy, heavy, thick makeup that's caked around the extension. Well, you probably know, but let them tell you what they think happens. Uh, so let me kind of look at my notes and then the client try to explain. Uh, one of two things usually happens. Either lashes started falling out soon after her lash appointment, which is usually an issue you can troubleshoot based on your application and reviewing your notes from your last appointment that may have contributed to poor retention. You should be taking notes at every, with every client of anything that was weird in the appointment, um, retention results, what the humidity was, what the temp was, was the glue acting funny. That way you have documentation of at least a place to start troubleshooting if they come back in with poor retention. Or the other thing that happens is she noticed after a week or so that her lashes started falling out more, which would usually be due to maybe like seasonal shedding or improper aftercare. If it's within three days of her appointment it, and her lashes are falling out, it's generally due to application error. Anything after that, it's really hard to pinpoint whether it was her, whether it was you. That's why we do aftercare, why we educate on that. It is teamwork. You do your best in the service to get her the best retention. She does her best at home to make sure that the retention lasts, that she's taking care of the extensions, and it's a beautiful relationship when you're both doing your part. Uh, either way, that's a whole other episode on retention that we'll save for another day, but you handling of this event is what we're focusing on today. If the situation comes where you're not sure if it's a fill or a full set and you have this policy in place that you require X amount of number of extensions, you would then go in and count the number of extensions per eye. If she meets or exceeds the minimum that you have set in your policies, then let her know and educate her on aftercare again so she doesn't risk being this close to needing a full set again and possibly recommending and upselling retail items that are going to help with retention like cleanser. Uh, possibly advise her on coming back in sooner than usual to her next appointment as well so she doesn't risk needing a full set. So if she comes every three weeks and you notice her retention just isn't lasting that long, tell her to come in every two and a half weeks or every two weeks. A, you're increasing the customer lifetime value, which is good for you. And if you just try to do what you can when they really need a full set, you're robbing yourself of increasing the customer lifetime value. Also, you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to sell retail, which should help with retention. Um, and if she notices her lashes aren't lasting more than, you know, if she knows that a lot are falling out in the first two or three days, this is where you can have a client satisfaction policy where you want them to be happy. And if they're not happy with the result, they can contact you within the first 72 hours of their appointment and let you know what's up. So you have the opportunity to make it right before they go getting pissed or just never want to come back because they didn't like the result open up communication. So if there is an issue after the appointment, they feel comfortable and welcome to share feedback or a dissatisfaction with whatever the service was. If she doesn't meet the number of extensions, you could do one of two things. You can give her a warning that you'll make a one-time exception. Again, we're extending the olive branch, showing that we're human. We're going to make an exception um, for today and just do what you can. But next time it will be a full set or rescheduled as a full set. Or you could say, unfortunately, you don't have enough extensions remaining to be considered a fill and you need a full set. I'm going to change your appointment to a full set today, or I need to cancel today's appointment and we'll reschedule you for a full set when I have an appropriate amount of time to complete the set. Now, I recommend giving them a one-time warning because most clients aren't going to be all too excited about unexpectedly either paying for a full set and staying for a longer appointment without fair warning, or that you're going to cancel their appointment altogether. They're going to walk out with sparse lashes and it's gonna be another week or two before you can get them in for a full set and pay for it. It just isn't gonna bode well without some sort of warning. So I recommend the warning approach, very similar to the family emergency one-time exception. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you don't have enough extensions to be a fill. Here's my recommendation. This is the one-time exception. If you come in with this few extensions again, we're gonna to need to make this a full set and not a fill. Today I will do what I can, but this is the one time I'm gonna do it again communicating in no unclear terms what is going to happen from here on out. Uh, so perks of this policy, you stop feeling like you have to give away your time for free or provide less than stellar results for a client because you're rushing to get as many extensions on as you can because she's basically bald coming in. This also creates the opportunity for you to educate your client on proper aftercare and oftentimes that leads to them purchasing a lash cleanser because the alternative of not purchasing, say your $20 lash cleanser, is risking paying for another $150, $200, $250 full set in two weeks. So you do the math. 
right? And if their cleanser can get them going to three weeks rather than two weeks, then over the year, they buy maybe three or four cleansers at 60 or 80 bucks, but they're saving maybe four or five fill appointments because they're able to go a little bit longer over the course of a year. Uh, you also eliminate the confrontation and confusion of having a percentage of extensions remaining, which is typically where this policy goes way wrong. You honestly can't tell me you know the difference between 48% extensions remaining and 53% extensions remaining. Yet you are charging a client a very different price based on your made up assumption of the client's retention. Yee! This is highly unfair to a client, which is why they challenge your assessment of their lashes. And most of you cave to just do what you can so you don't have to deal with the confrontation and the pissed off clients. But then you're not following through on your policies, so you're just getting walked all over. And you don't have the time to either get them in for a full set and you don't want to risk losing the client by canceling the appointment and trying to get them in for a full set at a later date. A client can justifiably argue with you about percentage remaining extensions all day long. A client cannot argue with a finite number when you physically count each extension remaining. So you eliminate the debate on fill versus full set when you have a specific policy that states number of extensions. Now I did have somebody asking, how do you know the number of extensions remaining? This is gonna be different for each and every one of you. It really depends on how quickly you can work an appointment. Now for me, I required 15 extensions remaining per eye. I could get, I mean, I was pretty quick, not a lot. I could get somebody back to pretty much a full set in my fill timing if they came in with at least 15 extensions remaining per eye. It was when they had less than that that it really just, I mean, anything less than that, it was going to be a full set. It's barely anything there. Some of you may be, you know, if you're slower and it takes you longer to get through an appointment, you may be in the 30 to 40, maybe even 50 extensions remaining per eye. It depends on how many extensions you typically put on and how many you can make up for um, to determine. I would always err on the side of lower amount of extensions remaining to be fair to a client that, you know, what is the typical, if your typical client comes in with 40 extensions remaining per eye, maybe bump it down to 30, 35, somewhere in there. So we're talking about cases where retention wasn't stellar, but it wasn't completely gone either. The scenario I ran into the most with this was when people would come in for what I call a new client fill. You guys call them foreign fills, although I don't know why, because there's nothing foreign about them. They just came from down the street. Uh, is if the extensions were healthy and they were applied properly, that just the retention wasn't great, which was honestly my ideal type of client. They would come from places that they couldn't get more than two weeks and I could get them beyond three weeks. I would have this be more where I would count like, oh, this really should be a full set. Let's do a quick removal or I'm just going to add into what's there, but this is not considered a, a fill appointment. I can talk about the new client fill strategy another day, but that's typically where I saw this happen the most. Retention was not as much of a struggle for me once I figured out my adhesive and got it locked in. All right, last issue that we're going to cover today is refund requests. So the policy solution for anybody requesting a refund is a refund and client satisfaction policy. Pretty obvious. Um, I had no refunds stated in my policy. So the, the wording on it was the no refund policy would say something like you are paying for the artist's time, product, and other expenses used to provide you with a service. No refunds will be given for any reasons on services. And I even said, or products. I did very little retail. And so it was really hard to try and get the manufacturer to give me a credit and it just became problematic. I would rather just gift them a free product rather than try to return and uh, all that stuff. Uh, if you are unhappy with the service or result, you may contact us within 72 hours of your appointment to discuss your concerns. And if a fix can be done to address your concerns, it will be done so with XYZ service. I had a complimentary 30 minute express fill, really cute way of terming that as an emergency fill. Um, it wasn't something I advertised. It wasn't something that was listed on my service menu. It was something I only used for these specific situations and one-off situations with clients if they were in between fills and they just needed a quickie touch up. So uh, that would be the complimentary service that I would offer if a client was unhappy with whatever, the styling, the length, the fullness, the, they were falling out really quickly. That would be my solution. Any concerns brought up after 72 hours of your last appointment, or if you fail to follow the proper aftercare instructions, 
a recommended fix will be offered, but at the full price of the service recommended. So if they went to the sauna right after their lash appointment, or they did a hot yoga class and like three hours later, all of their lashes are just popping off. I'm not so inclined to be giving away my time when you didn't follow my instructions that I clearly stated and wrote out for you and sent you home with. So I'm not going to give away my time when you were the one that didn't follow procedure. Um, so that is kind of the boundaries around like clients got to do their part. You got to do your part to educate the clients on what the aftercare is. And usually some exceptions, but usually if a client has poor retention within 72 hours, it is at fault of application. That's just an easy way to put it. It's typically true. Your environment was wrong for your adhesive. Lashes were popping off. You didn't cleanse the lashes. Um, you didn't apply the bases. I mean, there's a whole bunch of retention struggles, but if lashes aren't lasting 72 hours, that's usually due to application error. So how do you implement this policy? This policy is great to remind every client of at the end of every single appointment. So you are welcoming them to communicate openly with you. You could say something like, my goal is to ensure you are over the moon with the results of your lashes. If you get home and for any reason you're not in love with the results, please let me know within 72 hours of today and give me the opportunity to see what I can do to address your concerns. The key to this success with this policy is to be very clear about this prior to any service being delivered. If you are not going over every policy in person during your consultation with a new client, then you risk a client asking for a refund because they weren't aware that refunds weren't an option. And they'd probably be super pissed about it when you don't give her a refund because she wasn't aware that refunds weren't available and she ain't happy. Knowledge of there being no refunds is how you avoid refund requests. I never had clients ask me for refunds because I made it very clear that refunds weren't available. I, I gave them what was available if they were unhappy with the result or service, but I made it very clear from the get-go, from their very first appointment, that there were no refunds available. So they can decline to even have the service because I haven't started the service yet if they're not okay with that. But if they're okay with that and they're getting on my table, they've agreed to that no refund policy. The key here too is also to open up for feedback. A lot of times when clients are unhappy with the results, they ghost you and they don't give you an opportunity to fix it. When you open up the opportunity for them to share feedback and that there's something that you want to do that you want them to be happy, you will learn so much more about how to improve your application, your customer experience, and the results by getting actual client feedback. When we don't open up that opportunity and we just hope and pray that they'll reach out to us if they don't like the results, even if they seem like they were happy when they left, we miss out on this opportunity for growth. All right, so some perks of this policy. Uh, most refund requests are due to a client being unhappy with the result and not feeling as if the experience or result was worth the money invested. There are times when this 100% is warranted on behalf of the client, especially if you struggle with retention. If a client's lashes don't last more than a few days, then I think all of us would want our money back for a service that didn't deliver the desired results. And I encourage my students inside the Lashpreneur Society to take ownership and responsibility for the results that they get in their business, which means that if you struggle with retention and application or your application method or your adhesive doesn't last more than a few days, then own it. And that client, un their undesired results is caused by you. And that's okay. You're still learning. You're still growing. You don't have to know everything but you lose the opportunity to fix and grow and get better when we just shut clients out and we don't want to hear their feedback, even when it's negative. Most issues with an unhappy lash client within two to three days of their appointment is due to improper application, no matter how bomb you think you are. Most of the time, it's lashes falling out way too soon because the lash artist can't get the adhesive to last. Your client shouldn't have to suffer through your learning curve unnecessarily. However, does that mean that you give back hard earned money? Not necessarily. Hence why I like having this client satisfaction policy. We've already made it clear that no refunds are available ever, but we want to ensure happy clients and what we can offer a client when there's an issue that is likely caused by adhesive struggles for the most part, retention issues, maybe the client didn't like the styling or the length or how sparse the lashes are, is a 30 minute free fix appointment. You could do up to 60 for me, 30 minutes was more, more than enough to fix things. We're not removing, we're not starting over. We are doing what we can to fix the issue, whether we're replacing some ones that fell out or we're fixing the styling a little bit or we're adjusting the curls or trying to make them more dense or dramatic. <clears throat> 
Um, but that was what the solution is. We're, we're being reasonable, right? We're saying we're not going to give you money, but we are going to try and fix it because we do want you to be happy. If refunding you is going to make you happy, then you shouldn't have gotten the appointment in the first place. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so the 30 minute fix will make a good bit of difference in unhappy results and an unhappy experience. If they choose not to take you up on this, then that's on them and no refunds. So no solution. You are extending, here's the policy. Please let me know if you're unhappy. I want to make you happy within reason. Here's what I can offer you to make you happy. And then it's on them. They can decide whether to continue or not. All right. Those are the three issues that we talked about today. A no refund or a refund requests a fill when it really should be a full set, and sickness and last minute cancellations due to an emergency or family sickness. If you're interested in seeing an example of the policies I had in my lash business, you can download them at thelashpreneur.com slash policies. All right, guys, have a good one. I will talk to you next week.